Welcome back, Richard. It's it's good to see you this morning. Good morning. Good to see you too. And you know we have the uh, we, you mentioned it uh, last week, and we've talked about it a couple of times. But the holidays are coming. I don't know if you know that or not. Um, no, actually, uh, no. Of course, this is that time of year, and um, it it starts to affect everything. You know, you you talk to families about their kids in school, and you remind them, you know, the holidays are coming, and anything you want to get done. You know, you're going to lose a week in November and you're going to lose a couple of weeks in December. So um, and if you have projects to do, remember that a lot of time is going to be spent preparing for and celebrating the holidays. Um, Absolutely. It's also a time of family, yeah. <laughs> family get togethers, um, something we talk about. We usually talk one way or another. We talk about the issue of getting together with family members and the the joys and the dangers uh, of uh, family family events and so yeah. we've, um that's it's that time of year again a absolutely and and you're right it is that th this time of year we usually talk about spend a little bit of time talking about families because you know it, it's that interesting period where we at the same time feel as though we have to see family and that we want to get together and we want to spend time with people maybe that you haven't seen in close to a year um right. But at the same time, there's a, a great deal of anxiety and a great deal of, you know, for some people, distress with the idea of seeing family mm -hmm. and um, having to to deal and cope with with those struggles. And so that's going to be that's the topic of our of, of the podcast today is we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about about families and what happens with families, especially when families divorce. But talk about family estrangements. Because mm -hmm. that's that's a you know well we've had a lot of talk about that here in the office lately with some of the families that we've been working with individually and so it's a, an important topic for us to discuss. Exactly. Um, we want to talk specifically about something called uh, when families divorce, uh, not not parents divorcing, but when family right. members divorce. And the word that's most frequently used is estrangement. To you, you have this separation among family members. Right. And um, so we want to take a look at this, this issue. Uh, the holidays are coming. We're going to be uh, wanting to spend time with family. Um, and so these uh, this this issue of family estrangement comes up. We wanted to take a look at that, take a look at that issue. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of family estrangement, this this podcast is based on our uh, our personal experiences, but also our clinical clinical experiences, because this is something that we spend a lot of clinical time doing is mm -hmm. uh, dealing with family breakups, whether it's parent child breakups or sibling breakups. Mm -hmm. um, the whole idea of reunifying families uh, is an important part of the work that we do. So this is based on our on our personal clinical experience, but also the work of a woman by the name of Pamela Lee, L.I., She's written a book called Turning Tantrums into Triumphs. She's actually trained as an engineer, um, but she's also a parent and um, has an interest in children, child development, wrote a book called Turning Tantrums into Triumphs, which turned out to be a bestseller. And she's since started a website called Parenting for Brain mm -hmm. and uh, put a um, we put that in our show notes uh, where yeah. that we can access that website. So. So what we're going to talk about this morning is based on based somewhat on her work, but also on our personal and professional experiences. Uh, absolutely. So, so let's think about this idea of, of family estrangement, and, and I like that you differentiated between, you know, we're not talking about when when a couple divorces, we're talking about when a family divorces, and, and so what we're talking about with family estrangement is when one or more um, individuals in a family chooses to withdraw from the rest of the family they 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 choose to to remove themselves from the um from their from their family oftentimes this is in immediate family so this is when a you know when a, an adult child sort of chooses to remove from the the remainder of the core of their family or um it, it could be a parent that that chooses to to become estranged um but it's just that that removal um, estrangement uh, of an individual from the family member 
usually voluntarily. Um, right. You right. know, there, there are a couple of types of, a uh, couple of ways that this can happen. Um, you know, some of it is intentional and some of it is just sort of life circumstances. Right. Um, and, and that makes a difference. Right. Yeah, there's really two types of breakups. As, as you and I looked at this uh, and discussed it over the week, there's really two ways that families separate uh, and become estranged. One is a sort of a gradual, normal loosening of ties. Right. It's nobody's fault. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine whose family um, owned a farm somewhere uh, a generation ago. His grandparents owned a farm. They had a large family. And as the adult children left the farm and moved to other places, now remember, this is before cell phones and this is before you know, uh, telephones had, had just come out uh, 50, um, 100 years ago. And as, as, as children, adult children left the farm, there was a gradual loosening and many of them never returned. Um, my grandfather came to this country when he was 16. He never, he never returned. He lost contact with his birth family. Um, there was simply no way in those years to communicate. And so, he came to this country and started a new family. Um, so that's a that, that's sort of a normal progression of events. Nobody's angry. Uh, my grandfather didn't leave in anger. He came here to work. Um, people leave the farm to get a job somewhere else. And so you have a geographic relocation and a gradual loosening of ties. Uh, normal, sad, unfortunate, but normal. Right. But there's a second type of estrangement and we call that chaotic dissociation. Um, Pamela Lee calls it chaotic dissociation. And we thought that's a nice, nice way to put it. These are angry breakups. Right. Um, and this idea, uh, and you and I talked about this many times, this is more difficult to for us to grasp. Uh, it, it just is, you know, we understand that p other people make us angry, but but should it should it lead to estrangement? Right. That, that's the issue. You know, we, we all upset each other once in a while. But should it really result in estrangement? And apparently it does. And she presents some uh, what I would consider alarming statistics. Um, yeah. She said she she has some really alarming statistics. She said, according to her um, report, seven percent of adult kids are estranged from their mothers, and twenty seven percent, twenty seven percent are estranged from their fathers. That means that one out of four kids don't talk to their fathers anymore. Right. You know, I had no idea that we were looking at numbers like that. Right. Right. And and I, you know, just to kind of expand on that, forty four percent of young adults report that they have experienced some type of estrangement yeah. um, in their family. Almost, so, half, yeah. of all, almost half, half of all adults, um, these, these were college age students. Mm -hmm. the, these were, that study was done in a college. And half of them said that they've experienced some type of estrangement from family members. Those are astonishing statistics to me. I, I'm just, I'm shocked by that uh, mm -hmm. because you and I are of the belief that uh, family relationships are somehow special or sacred or sacrosanct. Mm -hmm. And yet for 44% of us, uh, we experience estrangement. Right. So it, it's a difficult concept. It, for me, it was a difficult concept to grapple with that family members would simply stop talking to each other. Right. Yeah. And, and we're not necessarily, not really talking about, you know, th that, that uncle or that cousin yeah. that, you know, is just, you know th their belief systems or their their mm -hmm. political views are just very very different than yours. Right. And so it's like oh, right. I don't really want to talk to them too much. We're not <laughs> talking about those types of no. uh, estrangement. We're talking about immediate core family, uh, siblings, parents, children. Those kinds of you know those kinds of close um, closer relationships. Mm -hmm. We're talking about estrangements in in those relationships, and and that is why we believe it's so much more um shocking that these are the kinds of statistics that we're talking about because that's just a lot of people that's it i mean you know 44 percent that's nearly half right yeah to me it was uh, you know when i heard people not didn't talk to each other family members who you know they i would i would when i was an adult when i became an adult um, nobody in our family stopped talking to each other i mean i grew up in a big italian family and it just never it never happened we just um, it, it, but I, what I what I compare it to is in the Catholic Church, 
you couldn't get divorced. There was no such thing as divorce. And so it was never an option. And so not speaking to each other in our family, it was never an option. Whatever problem there was, you had to resolve it because you just didn't stop talking to each other. It was it was like a, a Catholic divorce. You just couldn't. Um, and so this 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 is all very this was all very shocking to me that, that this many people stopped talking to each other. And I was surprised professionally that children would stop talking to their parents or siblings would stop talking to each other or you would stop talking to to other family members. Now, when we move to causes, when we try to figure out why is this happening, there's a common uh, a common misconception, and that is that something happened or somebody said something or some tragic event occurred that caused the breakup. And that is generally not the case. The event serves as a trigger to ignite the real cause. There's some underlying cause. So what, what we want to do is move away from, oh, well, she made this comment about my children or she made this comment about my whatever. No, it wasn't the comment. There was some underlying problem, some underlying cause that was triggered by the comment. And we want to talk about the three fundamental causes for family estrangement. Right. Now, I, I think it's pretty would be pretty obvious that one of those is um, intrapersonal issues, something right. uh, about the person, him or herself. Right. Um, you know, we could be talking about mental illness. We could be talking about sort of self-serving, self-centered, you know, narcissistic types of tendencies. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we could be talking about a number of things. Uh, immaturity is, right. is a huge one when it comes to. You, you know, you, you think about that child on the on the playground that, you know, he picks up his things and he's like, you know, I'm not playing with you anymore. And then he leaves. Right. You know, it's the same sort of thing at a much grander scale. Um, right. But it's that same sort of immaturity of I can't handle dealing with these this relationship or dealing with whatever this is. And so they just pick up and move and leave and right. don't want to talk to anybody anymore. Take my toys and go home. Right. Yeah. And then there's this last one, which is, and, and what we're talking about here are the, the characteristics of the estranged person, right? Okay, the person who's maybe pushed out. And you mentioned mental illness, narcissism, feelings that they're being judged unfairly. But this last one are things like gender identification, mm -hmm. um, sexual orientation, religious beliefs. And we see that at work today. Um, so I think we have to throw in political perspectives. And political. Yeah. yeah, true. Yeah, that's right. Um, there are all these hot issues that separate people. And, and so the, the estranged person, uh, if the estranged person has a different point of view, um, that, that is a cause for, um, for separating that person, either they become the black sheep or they're shunned. And there are religions that that actually do shun people. They actually shun people who don't right. adhere to that religious belief. And so, the but these are intrapersonal causes. Uh, there's something about the individual. And, and so suddenly it is that this individual, I can no longer associate, I can no longer be associated with, I, I'm so angry, we're so different, that I have to end our relationship. Right. Now, the next, so that's within the person, him or herself, right. then there are things that are intra-family issues. And so these are things within the family that damages relationships. And now, I, I think that some of these things make sense. You know, I, I think that it makes sense that a person may become estranged from their family for some of these reasons like right. abuse and neglect sure that's mm -hmm. a very um you know that's a very common reason why people will may stop uh talking to or stop interacting or seeing their um immediate family right. um you know the way in which a person is parented uh when they were growing up you know whether it's you know very rigid and controlling and harsh parenting you know those kinds of dynamics are commonly cause and um, result in some of this estrangement that we're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what about family conflict and robbery? How many times have 
And we said, why can't you be more like your brother? Mm -hmm. you know, why can't you be more like your sister? And that that creates a rivalry um, that can be exploited or can be a cause for problems later. Um, just like parental favoritism. You know, how many times have kids say, well, you like her more than you like me. Right. And we all, any parent has to be very careful that you're, that you're not doing that. I mean, you have to be self-critical and, um, you know, are you guilty of favoring one child over the others? Right. Children are different and it's easy to get along with some and it's more challenging to get along with others. But if you, as a parent, if you start to uh, show any type of, really show any type of favoritism, um, it's probably not going to end well. It's going to create the, it's going to create the seeds of division. Uh, absolutely. Um, and then of course, there's obvious things like parental alienation, right. uh, the legal concept that uh, parents in sometimes parents in a divorce situation will try to alienate the children from the other parent. Mm -hmm. that, that's a completely different uh, set of circumstances. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and then there's like drug abuse and substance sure. abuse, mm -hmm. um, violence and crime. You know, all of those are things, again, that can, can be characteristics or aspects within the family unit mm -hmm. that right. could result in one or more of those individuals becoming estranged from from the family unit that's right and we acknowledge that there may be certain circumstances where estrangement may be if not justified at least understandable that a person would want to separate themselves voluntarily separate from whatever these events were but and we're going to talk about that in a little in a minute about we need to be very sure that these really are uh, that they really occurred and that they're worth separating over. Right. And then the last cause, the third cause, are forces outside the nuclear family, outside the family structure. And these would be things like um, obje objectional relationships. Um, uh, the, the parents, uh, the daughter brings home her boyfriend and mm -hmm. the boyfriend is completely different from, from the family. And they don't want the daughter to be with that person. Or... Um, you know, the, 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 there were all kinds of differences. There were religious differences, there are racial differences, there are political differences. Um, you were all, some of us remember a show called All in the Family, mm -hmm. where, you know, the, the, the dynamic between the Archie Bunker, uh, the dad and the son-in-law, and they disagreed with, with each other philosophically. And so a person like that could cause, um, an estrangement, you know, where the, where the, the daughter would say, I'm going to be with him no matter what. And the parents feel like the daughter's choosing him over them. And so right. that can cause an estrangement. Or the daughter can say, you don't approve of him. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to be a part of your family because you don't right. approve of my husband. Right. Yeah. So that, but that's outside the, the family. That's somebody else uh, interceding. Right. Yeah. And then there's physical distance, you know. Um, right. Physical difference, it, as well as, you know, that uh, that spouse, the spouse of the child, if they're controlling or abusive, you know, and, and pulls them away from the family. Right. The family still wants the, the child to be the adult child to be part of the, the family, but the spouse kind of alienates them, you know, themselves. So, you know, there, there's a number of these outside of the family um, uh, aspects that could result in that same same type of um estrangement and you know so when you look at these three things the the, the aspects of the person him or herself the things within the family the things from outside of the family you know I, I think it's important to question whether or not estrangement is is even justifiable it you know are there times when it's justifiable and are there times when it's not right. and, I, and i think as we were going through those three categories of causes, I suppose, there are absolutely times when the, an estrangement is understandable and justifiable, you know, like we said, with abuse and neglect and, um, you know, that type of controlling um, from within the family, it certainly makes sense that there are times when a person may, just for their own mental health, may have to just, you know, separate from it because remaining part of the family would be just too damaging to them psychologically and emotionally and, and, and sometimes even physically. Right. And here we encounter this interesting spectrum. And we I mentioned this a few minutes ago. Um, we all have reasons to be angry um, with, with family members. I mean, we're 
But we need to be very careful when we are considering estrangement, when we're considering separation, divorce from our family. Is the reason worth it? Is, is it so bad that we really can't do anything about it? And I guess, I guess sexual abuse would would certainly be in that category. Um, I think a history of of um, abusive parenting, uh, emotionally or verbally abusive parenting, mm -hmm. might be enough damage. But I think I think if you're considering estrangement. Um, I think you need to, to be very, very honest with yourself. And is it really, is it really a mortal sin? Is it really something that is so important, so uh, damaging, that I must separate? And and that's a that's a conversation that needs you need to think about that very carefully because this is a huge decision you're making and one that you could regret for the rest of your life. So be very careful that that it really is worth. Um, leaving your family, whatever, right. whatever happened is worth the estrangement. Right. And again, um, th there's no doubt that some of those things are absolutely right. Um, re justifiable. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, you know, disagreements, um, right. arguments, um, you know, disrespect. He doesn't, you know, my parents yeah. don't respect my opinions right. uh, or they, you know, they, you know, they they broke a trust or, mm -hmm. or something like that. You know, is that something um, that is justifiable or justifiable cause to separate yourself and become estranged from the family? Um, again, you, you know, Richard, as you were saying, you know, is it so bad that you have to do this? That does that does introduce the idea some subjectivity to it. You know what's oh, absolutely what's significant enough for one person may not be may not be much to another person. So right. there is some of that, but it's I, I think that what we're what you and I are really concerned about, I think, is that some of these decisions seem to be made so just to use sure. a professional a, a very professional phrase, willy nilly. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Some people just make it, are making these decisions to to remove themselves and alienate themselves mm -hmm. from their family, hurting other people, you know, and, and sometimes right. even hurting themselves in making this decision over over very um, menial, just small issues that could be worked out in another way. Absolutely, if, right. if they if they were willing to. That's right. In the in the Catholic Church, you know, I've obviously grew up uh, being ca uh, Catholic. In the Catholic Church, we have mortal sins and venial sins. Right. A mortal sin is you're going to go to hell no matter what. You're going to these are you know you kill somebody or you you know uh, right. there there are sins that are so egregious that there's nothing you can do. You're going to go to hell. Most of our sins are, are called venial sins. You know they're they're yeah you shouldn't have done it but you're not going to go to hell over it. You you might have to do some penance. You might have to fix it. But most of it is are venial sins, and and it's my I believe that most of the estrangement is the result of venial sins. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, mortal sins are okay, and I understand that. But I think most of our estrangement is due to venial sins. Mm -hmm. uh, and I this phrase, I have been disrespected. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not respected. My views are not respected, and. Um, and then the other thing is I have to have boundaries. So that's the second thing we hear. Well, I have to have boundaries. Um, and we're going to, we need to talk about those two things. Yeah. Um, and then there's the third thing is there are real threats to self. Um, mm -hmm. There are times when you really are being threatened uh, and it is, it's not physically threatened, but there is a threat to you. But most of those are perceived threats. You know, I, I think this person is disrespecting me. I think this person doesn't like me. Mm -hmm. um, so there's real threats and perceived threats. But let's talk about this issue about being dis being disrespected. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I that 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 phrase frustrates me so much because I, most of the time when people use the the word I've been just they're not respecting me. <laughs> they're using it they're using it incorrectly they're not talking about respect they're talking about obedience or they're talking about agreement or they're talking right. about compliance of some sort they're not right. talking about respect i can you can be completely respected 
while at the same time, the person completely disagrees with you. Right, right. I, the, of course, you're being disrespected. Like the rest of us, like everybody right. else in the world, you're going to be disrespected once in a while. Um, I happens. wish, I wish, I wish that didn't happen, but it does. But geez, geez, whiz, get over yourself, okay? There are more important things than you in the world, and I would get, I would, I would hazard a guess that most of the time when people say, "Well, I've been disrespected." Maybe you're being a little bit too sensitive. Um, we all get disrespected. Everybody gets. I would like to go through life thinking that nobody would ever disrespect me. That would be great. Okay. I'd like a lot of things. But I know that periodically somebody's going to disrespect me. Right. I can live with It's okay. It's not a problem. It's not worth leaving the family over being disrespected. Okay. Right. So that's disrespect. Right. The other thing I is. Go yeah, ahead. no, the, the the issue of boundaries. And, yeah. and I think that I one of the things we, we talk about is that our, our profession, I, I think pop culture has really led to the idea of boundaries being mis misunderstood. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't you don't set boundaries on someone. Right. You, you don't create boundaries for someone. No, you, you create boundaries for yourself. Right. You you people don't violate your boundaries you allow other people to violate your boundaries right if, if you don't want to be talked to in a certain in a particular way and a person continues to talk to you that way you're allowing that to happen by staying engaged with that person right right you know like you, you're talking about being disrespected well you can only be disrespected if you stay in a situation where you're allowing somebody to disrespect you that's right. So you mm -hmm. can't say that somebody is violating your boundaries. What you all you can say is, I continue to allow that person to violate my boundaries, and right. I'm not making right. the decisions that I need to make to prevent that from happening. That's right, because we, as a profession, I think we've we've given people this impression that you can set boundaries on other people. You don't set boundaries on other people. Um, our boundaries, our personal boundaries, are determined by what we can tolerate. And right. everybody has different tolerance levels and you have every right to set your boundaries wherever you want. Um, some people have bigger boundaries than others, but that that's a personal subjective decision that you have to make. When you start talking about boundaries, you have the other part of setting boundaries is you have to be willing to accept the consequences. Right. OK, you can put your boundaries wherever you want, mm -hmm. but then you have you're going to be creating consequences and you have to be willing to accept those consequences. You can't say, well, this is my boundary. It's 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 this big. And you have to respect that. And you no, you nobody has to respect that. That's your boundary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nobody has to respect that boundary. Right. You can't, if you're at a family dinner and your college age nephew is at the dinner table throwing the F bomb like like he's still in the fraternity house, you can ask that person to stop, but you can't set a boundary on him to stop. You, right. you can't determine his boundary. Um, you only have yours. All you can do is set a boundary on yourself. Right. And if you feel that you can't tolerate the F-bomb at, at Thanksgiving dinner, then either don't go, don't attend if you know you're going to encounter it, or you can leave. If it becomes intolerable, if it exceeds your boundary, then you, you're free to leave. Okay. Right. You just have to know there will be consequences in making that decision. People right. might dang it. They might get upset with you. But as long as you're willing to accept the consequences, you have a right to set your boundaries wherever you want. But right. you set it on you, not somebody else. Right. And and and, and other people's reaction to to it, to that, like you said, you know, if you decide to leave, that that's based upon their perspective of things. And so, you know, um, if they had the expectation that you were going that you would stay and you choose to leave, then yes, they're going to be upset about that. They may say something about that. It doesn't make them wrong. It doesn't make them uh, um, insensitive, or it doesn't mean that they're disrespecting you. Mm -hmm. It just means that their boundaries, their expectations are different, right. and, and that's okay. So we have to, you know, you said maybe we're being a little bit too sensitive. I think that we do that. Like you said, we, we set those boundaries very narrow, 
And then we get very, very offended when we feel as though someone has violated that boundary. Right. But, you know, again, if, if we continue to stay in situations where we allow those boundaries to be violated, then, then, then that's all, that's on us. We're doing right. it. That's right. That's right. You're not, you're not setting your, you're not, you're not enforcing your own boundaries, you know, you're right. violating your own boundaries. Right. Um, and so the, the, the point here is that if, if you are thinking, if you're tempted or thinking about divorcing your family, being estranged, be absolutely certain that whatever you're struggling with is really important to make sure it's a mortal sin. And you may want to talk to other people, not just your friends, but you may want to sit down with them clergyman or a therapist or a, somebody somebody who will give you an objective opinion and say yeah this this really does sound serious or right. no this is you know get over yourself this is not really a problem it's not worth it's not worth estrangement okay right. um and so you may want to consult with somebody either a professional or uh, somebody who'll give you an objective opinion in most cases it's probably going to be a venial sin it's probably going to be something that isn't worth having this uh, this estrangement occurring, and then you have to figure out how you want to deal with it. So th there's there's work to do either way, but in most cases, I would guess that the the cause of the estrangement is probably a, a not significant enough um, to cause you to separate from your family of origin. So be very careful with this, especially in the holiday at the holiday time when tensions and emotions are running a little bit higher than usual anyway. A absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right. I think that's it for today. Well, we will certainly be talking more about the holidays over the next few weeks. And because um, they are they are barreling down on us, uh, whether we like next, it or not. So, next week. Right. The first one, the first one appears next weekend. So absolutely. So, all right. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy and forget to be afraid.